Good Wednesday evening to everybody. Amen. You make your way to your seat. Stand up on your feet. We're going to begin our Wednesday night service. It's so good to see you all here. And uh, I, uh, I, I was glad to be back Sunday, but I, boy, I like Wednesdays. I like Wednesday nights, and it feels like I hadn't been here in a couple of months. But uh, uh, we got to pray tonight. Brother Cody is sick. Brother David and Sister Sharon are both sick. Um, Sister Carolyn is very tired tonight, been there traveling all day. Um, Brother Donnie and Sister Sharon are unable to be here tonight. Um, I've got several special requests. Anybody have a request over here? All right. Anybody else on this side? Sister Rita? All right. All right. Here? Yes, ma'am. All right. Yes, ma'am. Sister Margaret? Sister Michelle? Thank God for that. Praise the Lord. Thank God for that. Sister Terry. All right. All right. Yes, ma'am. All right. Over here. Okay. Brother Ron. Who's that? Oh, goodness. All right. Sister Nadine. Yes. Yes, yes, let's remember her. Brother Robbie? Um, yes, ma'am. All right, anybody? Yes, sir. All right, we'll pray for her. Anybody up here? All right. All right, let's pray. Together, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we come to you because we believe in you. We trust you in the power of your word and the power of your spirit. God, there's going to be healing take place because we pray the prayer of faith right now. You said if we did, you would answer. God, we know, Lord, that you're going to go send ministering angels to, to those that are struggling, those that are in need, those that are sick in their body. I'm thankful, God, for the prayers that you've answered today, a couple good answered prayers. And there's some things you're going to take care of even as we pray right now. Right now, God, we declare it. Let it be as if it were not already, but it will be in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe you're going to bless this service and bless everyone that's here. Let the word of God go forward, fall on good ground. Pray you bless every song, every worship, every word of praise that's lifted up. We thank you, God, for being with us tonight. We thank you, Lord, for being with us tonight. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Why don't we worship the Lord together? Come on, let's go. Hallelujah.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What a faithful God. What a faithful God. You may be seated if you'd like to. We're going to receive the evening offering and uh, tithe and offerings on Wednesday night. And uh, we, uh, you can give on GiveLify, PayPal, send it to the church at Post Office Box 477. And uh, I do appreciate your faithfulness in your giving. Uh, the giving has been incredible. Uh, when I tell everybody how I testify about it all the time to all of my friends and everywhere I go that we came through the pandemic in better shape all the way around than when we started in it, and that's because of the grace and mercy of God. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And the Lord has done some good things, testimonies before church of people being blessed when they give, and it'll always happen like that. Amen? Amen. It'll always happen like that. And uh, uh, we'll talk about giving a little bit in our Bible study tonight and uh, the, the blessings that come with it and the difference it makes in heaven. The Lord, the Lord got his eyeballs open when we give. Everybody knows that? Huh? So uh, uh, we, uh, we want to say our prayer, offering declaration. And if you'd like to stand, say that with us, and then we'll bring our offerings forward. And when you bring your offering forward, say hi to somebody. Smile at them. Tell them it's good to see them. Tell them to give again if they didn't give very much. Come on, somebody. <laughs> now, I'm just teasing about that. But, uh, but enjoy being at church. Amen? This is a celebration time. God's doing good things, big things, small things. He's never stopped working among us. But we're grateful for that. Amen. Let's pray. Upon the authority of your word, I have given, and it shall be given unto me, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither, and I give my offerings. I bring them today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked. The curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished and royalties received, my whole family saved and serving God in perfect health and abundance, walking in divine favor and blessing. I'm blessed going in and I'm blessed going out and all that I do will prosper in Jesus' name, amen. Come on, bring your offerings forward. And again, shake hands with somebody, bump fists with somebody, tell them it's good to see them in church on Wednesday night.
the Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated if you'd like to. All right. Come on up here, Sister Crystal. I have to ask my boss what I'm doing. And uh, I know I ask her what I'm doing. Yeah. Say that again. What did you just say when you walked up here? If you're not the boss, you hear that? <laughs> oh, I'm just, uh, yeah, I was hoping she might catch up on it. But oh. Sister Crystal got a pumpkin contest going, paint the pumpkin contest. So she got to hand out the prize. Yeah. Here, let's, let's, wait a second, wait a second. We got to get you a microphone yeah. so they can hear you on TV. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Okay, so first I want to thank every one of you that contributed to our pumpkin contest. We had more than what I'd ever imagined. And all the pumpkins, I heard all kinds of great things about every pumpkin that was brought in. Um, it was a great turnout, and I can't wait to see how much more we do next year. So I have um, the winners of the pumpkin contest. First place was Leanna Brindley, Sister Brindley. Come on, sis. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're about to take that prize back. You did good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I got it. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate Sister Crystal doing that. And I, uh, I heard we had about, uh, I don't know, maybe 500 people come through Trunk or Treat maybe more than that, and uh, it was an incredible time, and so we're grateful for all that. We had to go make like four candy runs, and we had a bunch to start with, so uh, we're thankful for that. How about the children, Riverbend kids, come line up across the front, and uh, uh, let me tell you all what, hey, all you old people, listen to me a minute. These youngins, these youngins, y'all better get your worshiping shoes on. These youngins is out worshiping all of y'all. Amen. And I'm super proud of them. Super proud of them. Come on up here, Ellie. All right. Okay. All right, Crystal, lead them on back, hon. If you boys would have waited about one more minute, y'all had to sit up there with me the whole service. Brother Angel. He don't want to do that anyway. All right, Riverbend Ignited, our student ministry, 12 to 18. You can head on back as well. And uh, Brother Shannon and Brother Ronnie's are handing out tonight's Bible study handout. I want to tell you real quickly before everybody leaves, um, there's a wild game feast at Bernie Monday night. It's a Section 4 event at Brother Beecher's church. I know there's going to be catfish, some deer, and we're going to leave the church at 6.15. All the boys and men age 13 and up are eligible to go. And if you have a, a wild meat dish, deer chili or anything like that, uh, make it and bring it with you because it's kind of like potluck. So, but it's just a fellowship. We're going to get together, leaving the church at 6.15 and going to Bernie. And we want all the men 13 and up to go with us. What time are we leaving? Yeah, ain't hardly nobody going, are they? Mm -hmm. that's, when, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Well, we're about to change this Bible study up. We're going to 
going to talk about getting involved. Amen. Amen. Who wouldn't want to be? Man, there, things are hopping and popping around these parts. This is exciting. This is exciting. When I tell folks that we, we between the ad adults, and did you have enough handouts? Between the adults and the children and the students, that a lot of Wednesday nights, we have 100 or 105 people on Wednesday nights. Man, they can't hardly believe that. That's like having three or 400 on the weekend at a lot of churches. And man, I, I love Wednesday nights. So we're going to go to the word of the Lord tonight. And uh, uh, I, I have every bit of confidence this is a word from God for this church. And I, I, uh, I hope that you grab a hold of the things that we share because it is going to be uh, essential. Uh, how many of you know that God's got to be able to trust you with revival? Yeah. Amen. He ain't sending it if he can't trust you with it. That's right. All right. And so we're going to have to learn to be trusted to go to the next level. Amen. Amen. Hey, y'all better get with me tonight. I hope y'all ain't all backslid while I was gone. <laughs> Man, I've been, I watched on TV and y'all, y'all get with them other people. There we go. I, that's what I was waiting on. I need to get me a sign to hang up on here. It says, it's okay to feed the monkey uh, <laughs> up here. Because yeah, when I get amens and stuff, it makes me, it's like feeding a gorilla at the zoo. And uh, so, all right, you ready? Let's go. At the core, at, at the simplest thing of following Jesus Christ or being a disciple of Jesus Christ is we have to recognize that he is the almighty. All right, he's it. All right, there's nothing more coming. There's nothing greater coming. He's the almighty, El Shaddai, the one and only, all-powerful, all-knowing, ever-present God. I have found what I'm looking for, and I'm going to pursue him with everything he has for me. All right, and every answer I need, I can find it in him. Every help I need, I can find it in him. Every blessing I need, I can find it in him. And anytime I get off track, I can trust him to bring me back. Everything I need, I find in Jesus Christ. Everything. All right, that's got to get settled down inside of you. It's got to get settled in your mind, in your heart, in your life. And you have to be willing on a daily basis to allow him to mold you into what he wants you to be. All right, he is the Almighty. Yeah, El Shaddai, the Almighty. Now, the, when we were introduced to, to God as the Almighty, Abram, who's about to be called Abraham, now, I want you to get ready tonight. I found out through the grapevine, Sunday, I was in fine form. I made two people mad. All right, now they both got over it already. But get ready, because I'm probably going to be two for two tonight. But I, I'm ready to rattle our cage, because revival's on the way. Amen. Amen. And we got to be ready for it. We got to be ready for it. I'm telling you right now, when we get our new building, we ain't going into it like no sissies. That's right. Okay? We ain't going into it like we're all at in a box of Cracker Jacks. I hope to be able to run out of this building into that one and lead a, a church about five or 600 over there. What do you think about that, huh? I believe we can do it. I believe we can do it. Or we might have five churches of 100, and that's just as good, if not better. Amen? So, yeah, I know I'm crazy, but that's all right. Abram, he hasn't called, been called Abraham yet. He's about to be. He is. Are you ready for this? 13 years into a faith failure. God promised him and his wife a son. He and his wife got impatient and decided that God needs their help. And so Sarah, his wife, said, get with my servant Hagar and make a baby and it'll be ours. The little boy's name was Ishmael, and he is now 13 years old, and Isaac still ain't been born yet. The promise of God. So Abram, 
the covenant, the father of the faithful, get up and go out of your house, the hand of God is on him, is 13 years into a faith failure. Now, don't you, nobody in this place better go out here tonight and say, Pastor is teaching that it's all right for me to stay bad. Because that ain't what I'm teaching. But I am telling you that the Almighty God ain't giving up on you. All right? 13 years. Sarah and Abram got tired of waiting on God. And they decided to take it into their own hands and they hatched a plan from which was born Ishmael. And we're still having problems in the Middle East because of it. Study it out. It's the truth. All those terrorists and all of that over there, them was Ishmael's kids. True story. Understand this. God is ready. Everybody say he's ready. He's ready. He is ready to establish his promised covenant with Abram He's going to change his name to Abraham, which means a father of a multitude in spite of his faith failure and his carnally fueled impatience. The Lord introduces himself to Abram in the middle of a faith failure. Now, we all know God don't work like that no more. You got to get right before he'll bless you. Y'all know I'm talking tongue in cheek right there because there's about, about 35 or 40 people that could stand up and say, that ain't true. He kept his hand on me even when I was dumb Amen. or even when I was all messed up, okay? Now, Genesis chapter 17, verse number one. And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, that's exactly right, 99 years old, and he got a 13-year-old boy and he's about to have another new baby. 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the almighty God. First time we ever get introduced to El Shaddai. First time we ever get introduced to the almighty God. Now, he said, walk before me and be thou perfect. Now, the Almighty God, he speaks to Abraham's successes and failures, to Abraham's friends and enemies, all of which fall beneath the purview or the power of the Almighty God. He speaks to where Abraham is right now and says, whatever's going on in your life, good, bad, ugly, or indifferent, it's all going to bow down to me, the Almighty God. All right, so he says, I am the Almighty God. First, he, is reveal, he reveals himself as two ways. First is the almighty God as an avenger. Now, what do you think of when I say avenger? He's going to take care of fighting your battles for you. All right? That's talking about dealing primarily with my enemies. And the second way he's revealing himself as the almighty God is as Abram's benefactor. And what do you think about that? He said, I'm going to fight your battles for you. And everything you need to become who I need you to be, I'm going to see you get it. I don't know y'all heard about that. Everything you need to become who I need you to be, I'm going to see that you have it. Everything you need to grow. The point being, when he says, I am the almighty God, he is telling Abraham, I am enough. I am enough. Let's get that settled before we start talking about what you're not. Let's get something settled right now, Abraham. I am enough for you to become whatever you need to be. If there's an enemy after you, I can take him out. And if there's somewhere you're falling short, I can fix it. Just believe this, that I am the almighty God. Does that make sense to you? Okay. Then he says, now this is why I know I heard from God today. He says, walk before me. Now, how many have heard that used before? 
walk before me. Probably nobody. But we have on at least two occasions heard it said, walk with me. So Brother Shannon, there's something different there. Now walk with me, we found first Enoch. What do we know about Enoch? He walked with God and was not because God took him. Enoch is one of the characters in the Bible who never dies. All right, God took him up. He walked with God. And then, of course, we know Noah walked with God, and he built an ark to the saving of his house. But the Lord tells, I'm going to mess around and feel the Holy Ghost on a Wednesday night. Y'all just excuse me if I do. He says, walk before me. Yeah, whoops. That's what he said. He opened the door and said, whoops. That's different. I want you to get this settled in your mind. It's different than the walk with me of Enoch and Noah. Because Enoch and Noah, man, they were walking with God not exactly, but for understanding purposes, they were walking with God kind of equal. You, you understand they are not equal with God. There's only one God. But they are complete and mature as they walk with God. Kind of like Adam and Eve did till they ate off the tree. Same kind. You, you got me? They walk with God all right, because they are complete and mature. So what do you think then walk before God means? I was hoping you would ask. Abram is to walk before God because he is not complete. He is not mature. He has not arrived, but he's going to because the almighty God is on his side, but he's not there yet. Okay, the evidence of his failure. Get this from the Cambridge Bible, from biblehub.com, what it says about walk before me. He said, the idea is that of the progress in personal life and conduct in the continual realization of God's presence. Here's what he says. I'm with you. I'm going to be with you, and I want you to walk before me because while you're with me, we're going to get everything worked out that needs to be worked out. Somebody better let this start sinking into your head right now because we like to think we got to be complete and we have, we have folks that reinforce that idea, but Abraham was not ready yet. He was not right yet. He had not waited on God yet, but the Lord said, we're going to go ahead and bring this to pass and I am the almighty God and everything in, hey, everything in you that ain't right, we're going to get it right. If it's something, hear me right now. If it's something coming against you, we're going to snuff it out and we're going to kill it. And if it's something like it in your life, we're going to see that you have it because I'm going to have a people and they're going to be a people through which Jesus Christ is going to come into this earth and I've got a plan for salvation and there's some people in New Madrid that need to be filled with the Holy Ghost and there ain't nothing going to stop this plan from coming to pass. I'm sorry. He said, the progress in your personal life and conduct that you're going to find in the continual realization that you are in the presence of the Lord. I've said this a thousand times lately. Where better to be messed up at than in the presence of God. Where better to fail than in the church? But we got to get our minds wrapped around the fact that God's got to be able to trust us with other people's failures. That's right. That's right. We ain't sure we like that. Some of us ain't sure we like that too much. Because we like to be able to join in a little group and talk about it when somebody fails. 
We're about to get delivered from it, though. Don't y'all don't y'all be surprised if one day we don't all wake up with a TV in our forehead because I talk about that so much. There ain't a, I promise you, I said this in elements class, I'm going to say it right now. Brother Cody, if we woke up in the morning with a TV in our forehead showing all our business, there ain't a soul in this church leaving out the house. Mm -mm. We got to get, we got to get our minds settled. Such were some of you. We ain't perfect. We weren't born with the Holy Ghost. We all needed the Almighty God to step over into our life and make us into what he needs us to be. And the church has got to join in with him in being that and encouraging people and edifying people. And when somebody messes up, we've got to say, you know what? If there's any judging going to be done, we're going to leave that up to God. But we're going to lift you up and we're going to encourage you and we're going to hug you and we're going to love you and we're going to tell you you're going to make it. There's only one righteous judge and that's the Lord. I read the other day, I thought about preaching on it tonight. David got all messed up, disobeyed God, and the Lord gave him three opportunities for punishment. And one of them was get into the hands of his enemies, and the other one, I can't even, what was it? I can't even remember right this minute. And the third one was to be in the hands of the Lord. And David said, let me tell you right now, I ain't going to be in the hands of man. If I'm going to be wrong and I'm going to be judged, it's going to be in the hands of God. Because he's fair. He's fair. All right? Everybody with me? He says, I want you to walk before me. And be thou perfect. Now, we ain't scared of that word no more, are we? We're not scared of that word no more. Ain't nobody in here walking around saying, ain't nobody perfect. Because that's not talking about you never make a mistake. That's talking about being complete, mature, full grown in the Lord. And so, is that not the super cool thing, Sister Maria? The Lord comes down and says, I'm the almighty God. Walk before me and be perfect. That means, Brother Ronnie, that on this journey, I'm going to get you where I want you. I'm going to get you where I want you. It's not much different that Jesus in Matthew 4 and 19 went by those disciples, Peter, James, and John, and Andrew, and said, come follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. They weren't ready to be your disciples of Jesus Christ yet, but Brother Ronnie, he said, come with me and I'll make you. Aren't you glad about that? Aren't you glad about the Lord that'll come along and say, I'll make you what I need you to be? The Lord tells Abram, to walk before me is to live in the classroom of perfection. It's to live in the perfect place you can be in. Abraham hasn't arrived yet but he's being called to that place nevertheless. Huh? He ain't even ready yet. But the Lord says, I'm going to take you there. Now, who gets to decide when Abraham's where he's supposed to be in God? Who gets to decide that? God does. Okay? The determination of perfection is decided by the Lord. Completion, maturity on his timetable. Huh? Man, I, I don't really want to talk about this too much, but I was on a, on a Zoom call Monday night, the refresh class with Brother Kenzie. Brother Jerry Dean was on there with us, pastors in Bossier City, Shreveport area in Louisiana, and he said that he's been hung up, Sister Leanne, teaching, preaching, studying, and trying to figure out the Bible called Jesus a friend of what? Sinners. He, Abraham's a friend of God. He called Jesus friend of sinners. And he said, I looked up that word friend, and you know what it means? Friend. 
Listen, it means somebody you hang out with. Brother Dean said, I think I got a problem. I ain't got no friends who sinners. If you know who the Almighty God is, you ain't scared to go eat supper with somebody that ain't living for God. Because you know, I told you I was going to get it. Oh, I don't know about that. I don't know about all that. Let me tell you something. Everywhere Jesus Christ went, every weirdo, wacko, and all the other OOs in the whole world, they flocked to him. They flocked to him because he loved them. He didn't act like he was better than them. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost up in this house right now. I feel Jesus moving in this house right now. Brother Blake, I'm glad. I'm really glad that the Lord came along and got me by the nap of the neck. That's how I see it. And he shook me a little bit. He said, boy, you ain't ready yet. You ain't ready yet, but when I get through with you, you're going to be. He said, come on and go with me. Come on and go with me. Let me show you some things. Let me tell you some things. Let me let you feel the spirit a little bit. Let me let you open up the word a little bit. And I know you don't think right. And I know you don't act right. And I know you're not sold out and committed. But when I get done with you, you will be. Because I thought I had to be perfect. I told the Lord one time, if you'll give me a chance, I'll prove to you that I'm going to be who you want me to be. I prayed that prayer, Brother Shannon. I don't know whether the Lord laughed or cried, but he did one of them out of frustration because he was like, boy, ain't you figured it out yet? You ain't never going to be good enough to deserve what I got for you. Ain't nobody thinking that I'm saying it's all right to go be bad, are you? If you think that, then I need to meet with you after church and set you straight. I'm not saying it's all right to stay messed up. I'm saying the Lord come and got you and said, I'm going to take you where I want you, and I'm going to fix you on the way. Do y'all see that in the Word? I mean, it's, it's in the Word of God. He didn't, he didn't tell Abraham, you're going to come walk with me. He said, you'll come walk before me. And when I studied it out, it's saying, and while you're with me, you're going to get right. Man. I feel the Holy Ghost, but I feel the devil too. I feel the enemy rearing his head up because he don't want us getting this grace and mercy stuff. He doesn't want us getting this pure Christianity stuff. Or everybody and their brother. Come on, folks. Y'all don't. I mean, our praise team's incredible. And we have a really good church. Y'all don't think all these people. Y'all watch when we get out of church and there'll be 98 people watched our service. And about, oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. About 5 o'clock Sunday afternoon, there'll be 350 people have watched it. Huh? You, why, you think it's just coincidence that everybody goes to their church and then they come home and pull us up on the internet? Huh? You think that's just a coincidence? You know what the deal is, Sister Callie? People want something that's real. They want something that they can feel. They want something that'll change them. They want something that says, come go with me. Come go with me, and I'll make you what the Bible says you can be. Come go with me, and I'll bring holiness to your life. Come go with me, and I'll bring peace to your home. I ain't throwing rocks at no other church or nothing like that, but I'm going to tell you what, we got it going on right here. And it's simply because, simply because we're a whole bunch of messed up people that have come together and decided that we're going to, ah, that we're going to link our arms shoulder to shoulder and we're going to walk along in the presence of the Lord and we're going to be perfected in the process. We're going to be completed and we're going to become who God wants us to be. I mean, I know it's going, it's going to upset some of us, but the day's coming 
when there's going to be somebody get the Holy Ghost on Sunday and they're going to win somebody to the Lord through the week and they're going to show up here and I'm telling you this, I'm going to let a one week old Christian baptize somebody in Jesus name because they want them to the Holy Ghost. Get ready for it. It's coming, Brother Blake. It's coming. I'm telling you, somebody's going to get the Holy Ghost on Sunday, and by the end of the next week, they're going to have taught somebody a Bible study and prayed them through to the Holy Ghost, and they're going to want to be baptized in Jesus' name, and we're not going to get in the way of letting God move through somebody. Amen. So since we, yep, said breathe. I need to find some way to take that off of my phone, my watch. So seeing as God's character hasn't changed, he hasn't changed one iota, none. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. The call to us to covenant relationship includes the same declaration. I'm the almighty God, walk before me and be perfect, be complete. Be whole. Be what I want you to be. He knows who we are, and he knows where we are. And whomever we are and wherever we are. By acknowledging and submitting ourselves to him, we're declaring that we have found the only avenue to becoming who God wants us to be and getting to where we want to be, and it's in him. We declare our intent to accept everything he's offering us and that we're willing to pay the price to receive it. Did you hear me when I said that? We're telling him, you're the man. Your way is the way. And I'm going with you. And whatever the price, I'll pay it. Because there ain't nothing better. I don't have another hope of becoming who I can be in Jesus Christ. Nowhere else, nowhere else do I have any hope of becoming who God wants me to be, who I need to be, becoming complete. My only hope of that's in Jesus Christ. John 8 and 30 through 34 says, and as he, as he spake these words, many, everybody say many, many, believed on him. Now let me tell you something. That's a good start. But that's all it is. It's a good start. He that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That's how it gets started. That's not salvation. It's not. Simply believing on him is not salvation. But it's a good start. Then said Jesus to those Jews, are you putting them up there? There you go. <laughs> then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if, everybody say if, if. you continue in my word. Now, How do I know that believing on him is just the start? Because that's what the Bible says. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if you keep going the way you've been going, ain't that what continue means? In my word. Then are you my disciples indeed. Huh. What do you think about that? I mean, what do you think about that? It sounds to me like that we have a responsibility to keep going in the word of God once we believe. Yes, sir. Well, you were on, you were on Abraham. In uh, Genesis 15, it said, and you believed in the Lord, and it was counted as to him for righteousness. That 
that was before Abraham even did any work. So once he believed, then Abraham w went through circumcision and all of that. Right, he was right. able to do works once he believed it. It was a continuing process. It was a continuing obedience. Yes. Like Abraham did. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. It was all going to, it's why he said, walk before me. It's, it's the journey and be perfected. It's, it's a process, but it takes some action. You just can't say, I came four Sundays in a row, three Wednesdays. I think I might be at level two. No. No. If you continue in my word, then are you my disciple. So you know what that means? Oh, I feel Jesus right now. It means that there's a whole glob of folks that believe on him. But they decided not to continue in his word. If, y'all notice, I, did I put that in big letters on your paper? If I didn't, I meant to. Yeah, if faith has been born, he is the almighty God, Guess what he did? Ball's in your court, brother. Will you come go with me? Continue in my word? Who is? In the beginning was the word. The word was with God, and the word was God, and the word was made flesh. Continue in me? Then are you my disciples indeed? Yes, ma'am, I am telling you. Just like Brother Blake just told us, there's a responsibility for your salvation in your court. It's not all up to him. Matter of fact, when he hung his head on the cross and said it's finished, his job was done. Say, so what about him healing and delivering and that checks in the mail and stuff that we pray about? That's called land yap, honey. Okay. That's the benefits to living for God. That's the promises that he made to us. He don't have to do nothing else for us to be saved. Nothing else. Brother Robbie, he finished it on Calvary. When he bowed his head and said, it is finished, the work of the man Christ Jesus was done. He went to that grave for three days. He got up Sunday morning with nothing left to do but wait on heaven with me and you. Look here. Take me back to 31 real quick because I got to bring them together. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, that's the beginning, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. Okay, next, next verse. And you shall know the truth. Where you find that at? In continuing in the word. And the truth shall make you free. Woo -wee. We like to talk about that. We like to say that. We like to preach that. People love it. But the problem is we ain't finished with it yet. Because look at here. The truth shall make you free. This is what these dumb bunnies said. 33, they answered him. That's the Jews, the children of Israel. That's who he's talking to right here. We be Abraham's seed. That was like this. Who do you think you're talking to? We be Abraham's seed. That's the title of our Bible study. Look at here. We were never in bondage to any man. What you call that 400 years in Egypt? Oh, it has a lot like entitlement. Who you think you're talking to? Who does he think he's talking to? Some people that believed on him, and now they need to continue in his word. And when they continue in his word, they're going to learn some stuff called the truth. And the truth is going to set them free. But they done got messed up on that. We ain't never been bound up by nobody. 
Well, that's a lie. They were in Egyptian bondage. And guess who the boss is right now? Caesar. He ain't no Jew. They're under Roman rule right now. He said, we've never been in bondage to nobody. How do you say you shall be made free? Now look at here. Are you ready? Are y'all ready for this? Jesus answered them, verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. Now, what does that mean? The freedom ain't got nothing to do with Egypt, and it ain't got nothing to do with Rome. And it ain't got nothing to do with them as a whole people of Israel. But as individuals, he's telling them, when you get your nose in the word and you follow what I'm teaching to you, there's going to be some... There's going to be some stuff you learn that you ain't supposed to do no more. And when you learn to cut loose of it, then you will be free. Huh? What you think about that? Huh? You mean I got to, yeah, you got to spend some time in prayer and study on your own, not on Sundays and not on Wednesdays. Let me tell you something. You old timers, I'm a, I am after you. I'm after you. Next time I turn around on Sunday morning, there be, better be as many veterans up here worshiping as there are new worshipers. We be Abraham's seed. Oh, yeah, I went there. I ain't scared. Huh? What's that word you said? Entitlement. We ain't never been bound up. Let me tell you something. If you sit back there judging somebody and you sit back there criticizing somebody, you better get in the book and find out where that ain't right and quit doing it. Y'all hiring up there at that place? Because I might be looking for a job tomorrow. I may need to get a job from the head. head. Man, yes, sir. You know, you notice, Jesus didn't point out any sin here, but he challenged them. Yes. 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 Exactly. Exactly. Perfect example, the rich young ruler. He said, what do I lack yet? The Lord says, sell everything you have and give it to the poor. You can't go in the Bible and find that everybody who's going to come to the Lord has to sell everything they have and give it to the poor, but he did. That's a, that is an incredible point. The Lord doesn't go along. He could. But he doesn't go along and say, now listen, here's the things you're going to have to find. Here's the things you're going to have to find. Here's the things you're going to have to find. No, he just tells them all, you better get your nose in the word and continue there. And as you learn, you will, you'll know some things there. He told Abraham, man, boy, this is some good stuff, ain't it, Brother Blake? Next time the devil tells y'all I'm on the disabled list, y'all tell him he better watch out because he's coming out of that hot. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I'm a preacher, and if I ain't preaching, something's wrong. Okay? I ain't bragging on myself. I ain't bragging. Y'all know me. Y'all came up with me. All my warts and everything, y'all know. Y'all. Some of y'all probably still talk about things y'all know I did. I, ain't, I don't care. The one that matters don't know nothing about it no more. His name is Jesus. And he says, what sins are you talking about? I don't remember them anymore. So I'm just going to let the horses run, baby. Jesus answered them. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. Now, what have I told you all? Mama, my, my pointer battery run out. I need to get another pointer. 
When you see E-T-H on the end of a word, what does it mean? So that's not talking about somebody that messes up a time or two or three. That's talking about somebody who just keeps on sinning when they know better. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Okay? Now, that's, that's not, but if you get in the Word, you continue in the Word of God, and the Lord starts revealing things to you, and you play dumb, you know what the Bible says? You're a servant of sin. And if you're serving sin, guess who you ain't serving? The Lord. And guess where you're headed? Paycheck time. Paycheck time. You know what the Bible says? The wages of sin is death. All right? Am I doing all right, Sister Maria? Okay. Oh, without a doubt. I'm going to even take a step further. Yeah. Without a doubt. Without a doubt, yeah. That, that, but that, that's covered in continuing my word. You know, that's covered in that. The word of God is the word of God forever settled in heaven. It's the same for Abraham as it is for us. Come go with me and be perfect. Be complete. But then you're going to find something in there, like Sister Nadine said, that fits you. And I'm going to tell you this. It may only fit you for a time. The Lord may only tell you back out of that for a time because you ain't ready for it. But when you get a little bit more mature, then you can handle it. All right, but here's the deal. There is no area of your life that can be off limits to the correcting of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Not an area. Because if we say, the, the gals from the mission remember it, and Ronnie, Miss Jane talks about it all the time. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. That means all of me. All right, because right? I can't do body and leave something out. When I present my body, I'm presenting my spirit, my soul, and my body, all of me. All right? And it's all surrendered. It's all on the potter's wheel, Brother Blake. It is all open to the molding of the potter's hands. And the truth is, when I get my heart in the right place, I am not going around and saying, reckon I do this, reckon I do this, reckon I do this. I'm so wrapped up in the work of the kingdom of God and telling people about Jesus and, and telling people what they got to do to be saved and, and telling people, come go to church with me and come go to this, come go to that. I ain't got time to be bad. Huh? Let me tell you something. Mama taught me this a long time ago, and it is the truth. It ain't in the Bible, but it ought to be. An idle mind is the devil's workshop. Somebody that's active in work for the kingdom of God, let me tell you this right now. Everybody in here listening to me? I want you looking at me dead on the eye. Don't you be playing on your phone or nothing. If there's somebody active in the kingdom of God, leave them alone. They're going to get where God wants them to be when he wants them to be there. The ones we're worried about are the ones that don't do jack squat for the kingdom. I don't need an application, Brother Terrence. I ain't playing. Because if they're, if they're active in the kingdom of God, Sister Maria, they're walking before the Lord. And they're going to get right where he wants them to be. Can't be any other way. If they stay with him, they're going to get there. Oh, do y'all feel the Holy Ghost moving in this house right now? Man, the power of God is rich in this place tonight. Let me tell you something, honey. We're going to another level. You just well come go with us. Man, I thought I might be done by 8 o'clock tonight. Whew. Wonders never cease. Look at here. 
Abraham's seed. In their mind, it's an elite statement. But I'm going to tell you right now, I want to be delivered from ever having an attitude that says, that don't apply to me. What do you mean bound? We ain't bound. We ain't never been bound. If the Lord, you know something, Sister Sheila? If the Lord takes the time to say something to you, he ain't never going to say, oh, my bad. I had you mixed up with somebody else. I mean, really, if he comes and tells you, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. Good chance you ain't got there yet. And if he says the truth will set you free, guess what? You probably ain't free. All right? I mean, if he comes and says it, guess what? You are the man. You need help. The word is for you. Okay? We don't ever have the privilege or the right to say, ah, that don't matter to me. Let me tell you something. If I teach on the oneness of God, 15 services in a row, it matters to you. Some of y'all pray for the Lord to whoop another kidney stone on me. I'm going to come after you. <laughs> I'm telling you next time I need a church member to win the lottery or something and send me to Australia for a couple of weeks if I need some time off. I don't need to get it off that way no more. <laughs> Jesus wasn't speaking of them collectively. They viewed themselves, if I'm a, a Jew... I'm in like Flynn. And Jesus Christ came preaching, this is between you and me. Your salvation is up to Y-O-U if you're going to be saved. Because if you're under the sound of my voice right now, you're going to hear the truth. You're going to hear the salvation. And when we get our, we get our letters all done, they're going to say obey Acts 2.38. It's going to be up there all the time. Everybody who sees us on TV, everybody walks through this door, everybody comes here for a wedding, everybody comes here for a funeral, everybody comes here for potluck, whatever the case may be, you're going to get the truth. And then when you get it, Brother Blake, guess what? It's up to you. It's up to you. We're responsible for our own salvation. It's our own sins that keep us bound. I don't care how bad your mom and daddy was. I don't care how bad your grandpa was. I don't care how bad all your uncles was. I, I know that's terrible English, but y'all just hearing me right now. The Lord ain't worried about your people's reputation. You are not responsible for what anybody else has done in your life. The only one you're responsible for is you. We live in a new world. We're reaching a new people. The process is still the same. We have got to trust the spirit and the word and faith. If they believe and they continue in his word, they will become a disciple of Jesus Christ. We got to believe that. Let me, let me bust through this real fast. Sister Pam, y'all don't cut out on me because I got that little blue paper that I want to give you from uh, Whistle Bridges, Waylon. Yeah, I saved it in here and that poem. So. I, I was probably going to forget, so just remind me. Uh, Acts chapter 10, Cornelius is a good old dude. Good fella. He gives so much money to the poor, and he prays so much, and he fears God so much that the Lord sent an angel to him and said, go to Joppa. There's a preacher in there named Peter. He'll tell you what you need to do. It's Acts chapter 10. You can read it for yourself. So he sends three men to escort Peter back to his house. Meanwhile, Peter went up on the rooftop to pray. He was a praying man. He was Holy Ghost filled Christian man, preacher of the gospel. He went up on the roof to pray. While he was praying, he fell into a trance. And God sent him a vision. Under the Jewish law, there are many foods that the Jews could not eat. 
Peter was very observant of this. He didn't eat nothing he wasn't supposed to eat. And he cussed and he lied, but he didn't eat nothing he wasn't supposed to eat. And he didn't, eat, he didn't mess up on the grocery bill even through all of his mess up times because he said, I ain't never eaten none of that before. Yeah. Nothing common or unclean has ever come through my lips. You know what he was really saying? I'm Abraham's seed. Yeah. Because the Lord sent down this sheet with all these unclean animals on it and told Peter, rise, kill, and eat. And Peter said, not happening. Not so, Lord. Nothing common or unclean has ever entered into my body. I doubt that's even true. But he was just feeling religious in the moment. This happened three times. The Lord sent the, the animals down, told him, rise, kill, and eat. And Peter said, not so, Lord. About that time, three men from Cornelius' house knocked on the door where Peter was staying. Peter's up on the rooftop thinking about what's this vision mean. The Spirit speaks to Peter and said, three men are here looking for you. He said, go with them and don't doubt anything because I've sent them to get you. So Peter goes with them. It's a little funny side story. Cornelius sent three people to get Peter. Peter goes back with those three and takes six more with him. It's a true story. Why do you think he did that? Big chicken. He's making sure everything's all right. And so that's, that didn't have nothing to do with what I'm teaching. But anyway, Peter goes to Cornelius' house and they meet. Now Peter starts getting some clarity regarding his vision. And he says in Acts 10, 28, and he said unto them, you know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew as Abraham's seed. It's against the law for a fellow that's a Jew to hang out with the likes of y'all. That's what he's telling them. But God has showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. So things are starting to click in Peter's life. Jews weren't supposed to have any dealings with Gentiles, but God is preparing Peter for a new revival. Now I want you to think about this. And I'm quitting. This is it, last page. Peter spent approximately three and a half years walking with Jesus Christ, the Jesus Christ, about three and a half years. He received the Holy Ghost on or around 30 AD. Now he's filled with the baptism. He spent three and a half years with Jesus. He's been on the Mount of Transfiguration. He has been repented of his sins, been baptized in Jesus' name, and been filled with the Holy Ghost. Are you ready for this? For seven years. It's 37 AD now, Sister Dana. Seven years he's been Holy Ghost filled, and he's still a bigot. He's still got something messed up in his life, Brother Blake that the Lord hadn't been able to get out of him yet. In case y'all didn't know, I'm having a good time tonight. <laughs> he has over 10 years of discipleship experience, at least seven of which he's been filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is still having to correct him. But guess what, Brother Cody? He does. He said, go get Peter. He can help you. But Brother Shannon, he wasn't ready to help him. <laughs> but the Lord said, if you keep going in my word, you're going to get where you need to be. I ain't done. I found some more stuff. Look here. Yes, we be Abraham's seed. We sure are the chosen ones. We're grafted in. We're part of the bride. We are. But we're still in the discipleship process. We're still continuing in his word. 
We are in uncharted waters. Let me tell you something. The things that we're going to see, the things that we're seeing, we ain't never seen before. We're seeing things we ain't never seen before, and greater things are coming. There's some rooftop experiences happen. Peter ain't a new convert, Brother Blake. He's not a new worshiper. And the Lord sent Cornelius' crew and said, go get him when he wasn't ready yet. But the Lord had confidence, what? I can get him ready. Galatians chapter 2, verse 11 and 12. But when Peter was come to Antioch, this is Paul talking, I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. Next verse. For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, that's the Jews, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. Now let me tell you when this happened. I looked it up today. The best I can tell, A.D. 48, 11 years after Cornelius' house, and Peter is still struggling, and the Lord is still with him. Huh? And the Lord is still using him. And Peter hadn't completely got the victory yet. Huh? Huh? And the Lord is still calling him and still blessing him and still anointing him. Now, I'm going to say this one more time. Don't you dare go out of here and say, well, Brother GL said we can just stay messed up. That's not what I'm saying at all. But Peter has lived a whole life where he has been at their supper table. They talked bad about the Gentiles. Uh, everywhere they went, they didn't walk down the same side of the road at them. They didn't trade with them. They didn't do anything with them. And he's had it ingrained in him. And you know something, Sister Maria? He don't want it there. You know how I know he don't want it there? Because when no Jews were around, he was eating with the Gentiles. But when the Jews showed up, we be Abraham's seed. He didn't really want to be like that. But it had just been pounded in him and pounded in him. And you know what, Brother Ronnie? The Lord did not kick Peter out because he struggled. Fox's Book of Martyrs said they crucified Peter. He refused to be crucified right side up because he wasn't worthy. But I'm going to tell you right now, I feel as confident as a human being can feel. I promise you, when I get there, I'm going hunting for him. I want to find him because you know why? I see a whole lot of me in him. <laughs> I see a whole lot of me in Brother Peter because I want to do right. I want to be holy. I don't want to mess up. I don't want to be stupid. I really don't want to say things that make me feel guilty for days afterwards and hide from people. But sometimes I'm stupid, Brother Cody. But you know what? I walk into this church and I walk behind that sacred desk and guess who's there? Jesus. Because he said, if you come go with me, we're going to whoop. We're going to whoop this. We're going to win this. Just keep coming going with me. We're going to win this. Is this all right, Brother Blake? Huh? It's truth. It's truth. Let's stand. Let's stand. God, we love you today. We thank you for your word. We thank you for hope. Thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost and your spirit. I pray, God, this sinks into who we are, what we're doing, who we're trying to become. Lord, we're going to reach some people. They don't know nothing about the Bible. We're going to reach some people who don't know anything about being religious. And we're going to have to be patient with them, and we're going to have to understand that we got to be patient with them as you have been with us. And, Lord, you've been patient with me. I don't deserve to feel the anointing. I don't deserve to preach the gospel. I'm a knucklehead from way back, God, but you're just bringing me along and you're still correcting me and you're still changing me and I'm thankful for that. I've got hope in you, the almighty God. That's the end of the day. That's all it boils down to is I serve the almighty God. Thankful for you in Jesus' name.
Jesus' name. Don't forget, Monday night, we want to go to that wild game feast. It's supposed to be men's prayer night. If anybody doesn't want to go to the wild game feast, come on and pray. All right? But I'd really like to support our section and, and also support the Bernie Church. Uh, Brother Beecher and them have been through quite an ordeal with COVID and uh, have been shut down several times. So anyway, any announcements? Oh, set your time. Fall back Sunday. Nothing changes with the church schedule. Let me tell you all this announcement real fast, though. Y'all know how when we spring forward, we have a 2 o'clock service? Y'all know that? This year, March the 13th, we're going to have 2 o'clock service at the Riverfront Park. 2 o'clock in the afternoon. We're going to sing and have full-blown church out on the levee. What do you think about that, huh? That going to be great? March the 13th. Be getting ready for it. Be getting ready for it. Shake hands with somebody. Tell them you love them. Make sure our guests know how welcome they are. and You're dismissed in Jesus' name.